Hi, and welcome back to this module on music and ethics, in which we discuss how music can contribute to uh, philosophical discourses on ethics and also on concrete uh, moral behavior. Today I will do an interview with uh, Nanette Nielsen, uh, currently based in Oslo. Hi Nanette, welcome. Um, Hello Marcel, thank I, you. Uh, could you perhaps briefly introduce yourself before we really start? Okay, so uh, I am an associate professor at the University of Oslo in the Department of Musicology here. Um, so my main areas are musicology but also philosophy. And then I teach film music as well. And uh, but you're you're not you, you you didn't come from from Oslo. I mean you're not Norwegian, are you? I am not. No, I am Danish, yeah. and um, I've lived uh, a big part of my life in England as well, and then moved to Oslo uh, and started my post here in January 2015. So fairly new back to Scandinavia for me. Okay. What one last question for an introduction? Um, I will just find it interesting to, to, to find out what what are you listening to? What kind of music is your favorite music? Uh -huh. It's always an interesting question to get. Um, I don't have a very sort of set favorite kind of music. So music that I listen to very much depends on the situation I'm in. So I moonlight a bit as a spinning instructor, for example. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a second second career <laughs> and um, and then I listen of course to dance music trance music stuff that has a regular beat that pushes you forward in a physiological physical kind of way but other times say when I do university admin I would listen to a lot of JS Bach because that pushes me forward in that particular situation so it really depends what I'm what I'm doing so no favorites, or maybe it's lots of favorites actually. So there's an, it's it's more inclusive than exclusive. So um, let's talk about this difference between the music that you're listening to when you're doing your spinning exercises and when you're doing your admin or uh, your professional work. Would you say that there is a different kind of engagement, or perhaps in some music listening there is no engagement at all? Um, well, maybe for some for some listening there's no engagement or there's certainly less engagement it could be in the background we can return to that and the kind of engagement that we are particularly interested in music and ethics of course is the kind of engagement that would elicit or inspire particular responses on the part of the listener and it's kind of I mean sometimes that can happen without you thinking about it and then you become attentive and sometimes it happens while you are already attentive and then you might be more reflective uh, after a particular moment and so, yes, there are different kinds of modes of engagement, and sometimes those modes of engagement can inspire or elicit particular responses, and sometimes those can be ethical responses. And it's, uh, it's about being able to um, generate a kind of openness towards that, towards that kind of response, if, if, if we take the ethical landscape into consideration, certainly. Um, so it, attentiveness. Um, how how would you how would you describe it? What what kind of behavior is that? Is 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 actually that you, that you're talking about? Is it that you, that you're you're having full attention? That you're listening quietly to what's going on? That you follow the structure of a piece, um, or or again, is it something yeah, something else? No, again, it, it it depends. It really very much depends. Um, but the main thing would be to remain open to the possibility that something might actually occur. Um, I guess what's particularly provocative is if we close off the opportunity that something might occur. And so in discourse, in the chapter discourse in music and ethics, I write a bit about uh, a particular philosopher who says that, well, we can only take the discussion of music and morality so far and then he ends up saying, well, hmm, I'm not sure how to explain this particular thing about music. And, and music remains this mystified object. It remains this thing that we've got to, we reach a point where we can no longer explain what's going on. And so he, he, he fails to, to open up or to yeah, open up the possibility of engagement, of, of ensuring that we can get the most out of music. So what I do there is just to show 
Well, we just need a little bit of a leap of imagination here to, to, to find particular scenarios and understand the ways in which when we engage in the, the process of music that we might be able to respond. And sometimes those responses have got ethical repercussions. And you're asking about the kind of uh, attention. And the thing is that it's not necessarily in the moment either. So the kind of engagement is sometimes a reflective engagement, right? So it can mm. happen after we leave the concert hall, after we've watched a particular film, after we've been to, you know, after we've been playing. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's about being open to possibility and open to uh, opportunity as well, and just recognize that music has got this power. In, in another video, I was having a conversation with uh, Anahit Kasabian, uh -huh. and uh, we talked about uh, so-called background music, yeah. and her claim is that actually. That, that doesn't exist. So there is always a kind of, she, she would perhaps say there's always a kind of engagement, perhaps not on a, so much on a reflective level or on a level of, of being attentive, but then she would call it, I mean, it's, it's an embodied engagement. Yeah. So could you say something about, about that as well? Is, is that also something that you, that you take into account when we talk about engagement? And is there an, an ethical embodied attitude? Um. Yes, I think that, uh, I mean, in, in music and ethics, we also bring the music onto the body, if you like, and into social relationships. And I would very much agree with that particular viewpoint of the Salians, that, that, um, that there is no such, you know, it, there's no such proper thing, I suppose, as, as utterly background of music. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, sometimes the engagement is less there, sometimes it's, not recognizable. If you've been in a particularly noisy place for a long time, you might not feel it until later on. It might not be, and it might have been an embodied kind of experience, actually, rather than uh, an intellectual or reflective one or something. But you uh, would recently, come... yeah, in New York, and and, and it mm -hmm. was astounding uh, the, the kind of level of noise that people were used to. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so you would you would, you would call like um, dancing also as as an act of engagement. Oh yes, definitely so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's an embodied engagement. Yeah. And do, do you think that some music uh, requires, asks for more engagement than other music does? I mean, I'm not talking about background or foreground music so much, um, but other typical genres of music which require necessarily because it's Maybe because it's difficult music, so you, you you need to be more attentive in order to be able to appreciate it somehow. Well, um, I think that the ethical engagement at stake has less to do with particular kinds of music and more to do with the with the engaged listener. So, in the framework that that you and I are proposing, it's more it's very quickly put onto the shoulders of the listener rather than than the object of music, if you like, uh, and therefore. I think it would be hard to 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 make any black and white distinction between different kinds of music. So all kinds of music could elicit ethical responses. Uh, potentially, it doesn't have to be complex. Uh, the situation may be complex, and the music simple. Um, you asked me where I was born. I'll give you a, I'll give you a little anecdote then on this on this note. Right. Um, so yes, I'm born in Denmark, and I've spent most of my adult life in England and then I recently moved to Norway and the other night I was singing a Norwegian lullaby to my five-year-old Danish niece and it's about trolls and I I didn't begin this particular musical engagement with any sort of kind of ethical perspective right it's a lullaby she needs to sleep but then um, having sung it to her in Norwegian she then asked for it to be sung in Danish, and then I sang it for her in Danish, and then she asked for it in English after that. And, um, and then I came away from the experience reflecting on, on the potential depth of understanding on, on her part, that, you know, that she as a small child would somehow grasp, sort of a surprise to me, uh, this sort of complex level of me belonging to different cultural environments. And so there was a, maybe a, a sort of deeper human dimension to it, to, to that whole musical experience that I came up with. And then maybe potentially so, ethical involvement. 
So she, she, you, you would call that that her, her reaction. You, you would call like uh, a real engagement with with this lullaby. That's right. She yeah. had a, a real engagement, a different <clears throat> engagement that I had. I hope she, she did fall asleep, you know, at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I also came away reflecting on this lullaby in a way that I certainly hadn't um, predicted. What I'm, what I'm interested in, and this will be uh, approximately my final question, is uh, how do we come from this engagement with music to a more, let's say, general idea about ethics or concrete moral behavior? So how can music, our relation to music, help us in becoming, well, let's call it uh, better human beings? <laughs> well, let's begin with the human, because human is key, right? So music is human through and through. So the kind of ethical perspective that, that you and I are proposing is, is a very much a humanistic perspective. So how do we get uh, to something a bit more general, maybe? Um, well, uh, we begin by recognizing that because music is human through and through, it's part of lived experience, right? And so once we are able to recognize lived experience in music, in our engagement with music, um, as we experience music being engaged with, then we are also capable of recognizing potential ethical uh, scenarios or perspectives from that. And then, um, so it's about recognizing, uh, if you like, how to live well uh, through music, I would say. So once you've experienced it in music, it is perhaps possible to also experience or at least recognize it in other relations that you have? Well, yes, because it's such a fundamental, fundamental tenet, right? So if we recognize ourselves as human beings, ethical, you know, ethics is a fundamental human uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, make, it's putting those two together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nanette, many thanks for, for this interview. Um, Pleasure. And um, uh, once more, we've learned uh, a lot how music plays an active role in the constructing not only of society, but also how it contributes in its own specific way to uh, ethics and morality. In the last video of this module, Hafez and I will have a short discussion on all the issues on music and ethics uh, that, that we've discussed in this, in this module. So, see you again. Bye.